Hey everybody, Liz LePage here. I know a lot of you On One users out there are also Photoshop Elements users. I absolutely love Photoshop Elements. It's kind of like Photoshop Lite, the easier, more intuitive version of Photoshop, and it's cheaper. So it's an incredible program, and what makes it even better, you can access On One from Elements. So I want to show you how to do that and a couple of the different ways that you can take a photo like this and edit it using develop effects and resize. So once you've got an image open, you're going to go up to the file menu and you're going to scroll down to automation tools. We're going to go ahead and start in on one develop and then we're going to talk about effects and resize. Once your image is open, on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see the tone and color pane. Now this is kind of your basic adjustment pane. This is where you can do things like increase exposure. This image is a little dark, so we're going to pop it up, but then also do things like add contrast. We can go in and recover some of the highlights because it is a little dark and then maybe increase the shadow detail. It's a little too dark over on the left hand side where that cliff is. We can go in and do things like add structure and haze reduction. We can adjust the color. For this image, I want to increase the vibrance quite a bit. It's a little flat and then it seems a little green, especially these what should be yellows and oranges on the cliff. They feel a little greeny. So I'm going to add a little bit of magenta and kind of decrease some of that greenish glow. Now, once I'm done in here and I finished a lot of these basic edits and part of the reason why I do this is because it's all in one place instead of having to add multiple different effects layers or adjustment layers and elements. This is kind of a one stop shop and that's why I develop as great. Once I've got these basic adjustments done, then I'm going to go into effects. And what I love about this is you can actually just click on effects from right here and then poof. One second later, you're in it. So these programs pair really beautifully together and you don't have to go back into elements and then go back into effects and jump back and forth. They just kind of happen together. Now, if you're new to effects on the left hand side of the screen, this is where you'll find presets. And these are prepackaged recipes that help you stylize your images a lot easier. Elements has a couple of these, but I find that effects has a lot of specialty filters like dynamic contrast that are very particular to on one and things like dynamic contrast are very difficult to reproduce in pretty much any other program. I don't I don't know of a way to reproduce this in a program like Photoshop yet that makes it look as good and is as easy as dynamic contrast. So starting with presets will help you inside of effects and it depends on the type of image you're working on. So this is a landscape image. So I'm going to jump right into the landscape preset category and you'll actually see that all of these presets show you a thumbnail of what they look like on this specific image. And that is so helpful. So we have a ton of different options here. There's quite a few. I really like Magic Ocean because I love the way that those blues are almost purplish. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. It's going to add the style to my image. And then on the right hand side, this is going to be your effects stack. This is pretty much like a layer stack like you would find in Elements, except these are specialty filters that are just here inside of effects. So we have everything from a vignette and you'll see this little check mark. I can turn it on and off and I can make sure that I think it looks good with the image. We've got color enhancements. What I love about the color enhancer is you can select a specific color channel like yellow and you can go in and you can change it so that the yellows are maybe more orange. And you'll see that cliff on the left hand side is really changing or we can make those yellows more green. So I love this option and it's great for images like this where a couple of the colors just aren't reflecting what you remember seeing. Those cliffs were really orange in my mind, but for some reason the camera made them a little bit more green and I don't like that. So I can go in and I can make all of these changes here. Now, one of the best parts about working with presets is that you can always go in and add more filters. So for some reason, this preset doesn't come with dynamic contrast and I want to do that. So at the top right hand corner, I'll go ahead and click add filter. And from here, we'll go ahead and add dynamic contrast. It didn't remove any of the other filters. It left them be and it just added this on top. I really liked Magic Ocean. I just need a little bit more contrast. 
Now, dynamic contrast is a very unique way of adding edge contrast to the small, medium, and large elements of your image. And it gives you the ability to separately add contrast to those areas. So let's say that we wanna add a little bit more small contrast, and then maybe a little bit less large contrast, and then maybe a little bit more medium. I can go in and I can make those changes. What's also really great about this is you have tone adjustments. So this image got a little too dark, and so maybe I want to increase the shadows just a little bit more. And let's say that we also want to increase the whites just a smidge. I can do that. The other thing that's really great about all of these different filters inside of effects is that you can add masks to all of them. So just like a layer inside of elements, I can click on this little plus button next to the name of that filter. It will add a mask automatically for me, and then it'll also automatically select my brush tool. Up in the tool options bar, you'll see that my mode is set to paint out, which means I want to paint out dynamic contrast. And I'm gonna do that on the sky because it got really weird and grainy and it just doesn't look natural anymore. So we'll go ahead and just click and drag. And as I do that, you'll notice that the sky is softening for me. And it just, it looks a lot nicer. The other thing that's really great about the brush tool here is we have something called the perfect brush, and this is very unique to On One. When you select this, what it does is it chooses and samples colors underneath the center of the brush and only removes those colors. So you can create really advanced masks like the one that you see in this sample. So all I need to do is just click and drag it along the edge of my cliff and it's leaving my cliff alone while still removing it from the sky. So I can go in and I can remove the rest of that dynamic contrast and my photo is looking a lot better. The last thing that I wanna point out here inside of effects is on the left-hand side of the screen, you can actually use our perfect eraser tool, which is our content aware fill tool and our retouch brush to make quick edits. One of the things that drives me crazy, and this is the best example ever for this, is I a lot of times forget to remove things and then I'm editing my image and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot to do that. Up in the top right hand corner, there is this big dust spot that's just sitting there and I bet you it was a, a raindrop or a piece of sand or something, but it's driving me crazy and I just wanna take care of it right now. So I can select my retouch brush, click on it and it's gone. And I really, really love the fact that I can do all of this in one place. The other thing, the content aware fill tool that we have, the perfect eraser, is great for slightly more difficult areas. So we have this truck that's down in the bottom left-hand corner and it's kind of detracting from the overall look of the image. I want it to be much more natural and there's just this big truck. So I wanna go in and I wanna remove it. And I'm just gonna click until I kinda get the desired effect and that's looking a lot better. So now that I'm done inside of effects, I'm gonna go ahead and just click the done button and it's gonna bring me back into elements. And there we go. On the right hand side in my layer stack, you'll see that all of the changes that we made are on a separate layer. So I can actually turn it on and off. And this is my original image, which is kind of weird and green and flat and boring. And this is my brand new <laughs> edit that I did in less than five minutes in effects. And this was with me using a prepackaged preset. So that's pretty darn good. You can make even more edits and you can do even more selective changes in effects, but this is a great example of the power that this program has. Now, the last thing that I want to mention is on one resize. This program is really easy to use and a lot of people feel intimidated by it, but I want to show you how simple it is. On One Resize is a way for you to take an image that might be too small and upscale it and make it so much bigger. Once you're inside of Resize, on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the document size pane. This is where the actual size of your image is. So right now I can print this about 13 by 20. Now let's say I wanted to take this image, and this is from one of my favorite areas of the Oregon coast, and I wanna print it huge. I want to print it so it covers my entire sofa. And I think that that would be really great. So I need this to be a much larger image. What Resize does is it upscales your image using a specialty algorithm that maintains a lot of detail so your photo doesn't get too soft. So underneath the document size pane, all you have to do is type in a new width or height. 
So if I know the width is going to be at least 50 inches, it will automatically adjust the height accordingly to constrain the proportions and it will run the algorithm when we hit done. So I don't need to do anything special. I don't need to check any specialty boxes. That's it. If you need to crop your image to a particular size, you have a crop tool on the left hand side of the screen and you can type in a specific size there. But for now, all I'm going to do is just choose 50 as my new width and hit done. And that's it. It went through and it processed this image using that specialty algorithm. It brought me back here into elements. And now if I decide that I want to print my file, I can print it as big as 50 by 33. I went pretty small, but you can take these images as big as you want. The first time I used this, I printed my photo as wide as a wall in an auditorium. So go as big as you want. And it's an incredible program to be able to access from elements.